This is a book that uh, my friend and mentor, Paul Rink, who I've written about in other places, recommended to me and that I, I've loved for years now. It's called Sailing Alone Around the World by Joshua Slocum. It's another obscure book, but you can find it. It's on Amazon. And this Joshua Slocum sailed alone around the world. He was the first guy to ever do that circumnavigation in between 1895 and 1898. He built this uh, little sloop called the Spray himself and sailed it around the world. And it's kind of a classic story of all the adventures that he had. Like at, at one point he was chased by cannibals off uh, Malaysia or something like that. We were just kind of becalmed in this archipelago and with nothing but the wind, a little puff of wind. And these cannibals were coming out in their canoes, chasing him from island to island. He's trying to fend them off, you know, with boat hooks and stuff like that. But it's all kinds of great adventures that he has. But the interesting thing about Joshua Slocum was that uh, he was not like a rank amateur. He had been a sailing master for years and years. In fact, his ship a full rig ship, the Northern Lights, or the Northern Light, I guess it is, was the finest sailing ship in the world at a certain time. So when he took off on this trip, he was really somebody who knew exactly what he was doing. So what I love about this is, you know, talk about the hero's journey. This is it. Sailing alone around the world is the hero's journey. And there, it, all of the beats that we find in a kind of a typical hero's journey, like getting through a storm, being becalmed, being shipwrecked, encountering a place where um, it's so pleasant that you never want to leave. All these things come up, and this great, he was like a naturalized Yankee, Joshua Slocum, from the great old New Bedford days, who was totally competent at these things. But here's the personal thing I wanted to say. When I was reading this, was when I was trying for the first time in my life to finish a novel from start to finish. And I had always crapped out and chickened out and choked at the end before. So in many ways, I felt like I was sailing alone around the world. I was watching this documentary about the 85 Chicago Bears the other night on ESPN, you know, where they had uh, uh, Mike Singletary and uh, Jim McMahon was the quarterback. They had Richard Dent, they had the refrigerator, Richard Perry, Mike Ditka was the coach, and Buddy Ryan was the defensive coordinator. And each one of the guys, as they were being interviewed, they said in a flash they would do it all over again. They didn't care what injuries happened to them because of the bond of camaraderie that they have. But writing a book or doing any of these sort of solitary creative enterprises is the exact opposite of that. You're alone. You got no teammates, you got no coach, everything you have to provide your own self. So it's a real metaphor. I felt when I was writing this book, my book, and reading this book, that I was sailing alone around the world, that I had to go from start to finish. Once you started, you could never go back, you know? And the isolation, the solitude was the challenge of the thing. And that's what this book is all about too how he sort of keeps his head together through the whole thing. So I highly recommend this to anybody that's on a solitary, creative, or entrepreneurial project. It's a real metaphor. In many ways, we're all sailing alone around the world. And this is, this is a great classic book on exactly that subject.